Hello everyone. Welcome to my new video. Today, we're exploring a vulnerable machine called Lampio. This machine is part of a single series on Volhub, and it's rated as easy in terms of difficulty. To get started, head over to the Volnhub website and download the vulnerable image for Lampio. If you're new to Volnhub, be sure to check out our Volnhub playlist for helpful videos that will guide you through the process. Let's dive in and see how we can exploit this machine. Settings up. Once you've downloaded the image, the next step is setting up the server in VirtualBox. The downloaded image is in the form of a zip file, so the process involves extracting the zip file and installing it by creating a new VM. First, we need to extract the zip file using WinRAR. After extraction, I discovered several helpful files, including the VMDK files. Our next step involves creating a new virtual machine. In VirtualBox, click on New to create a new VM. Name it Lampio and select the operating system type as Linux. Set the version to other Linux 64-bit since we are unsure of the exact distribution. Proceed by allocating RAM for your VM and click Next. Select Use an existing virtual hard disk file and import the VMDK file extracted earlier. After clicking Next, click on Finish to complete the setup. Once the import is finished, you'll see the Lampio vulnerable machine in the VirtualBox Manager. For better organization, let me regroup it into the Volnhub group. Now, change the network adapter to host only. It's important to ensure that both your Kali Linux machine, used for attacks, and the vulnerable machine are connected to the same network. So make sure they're both connected via the host only adapter. Next, attempt to start the VM to check if it works. Finally, you'll notice that our vulnerable machine is ready, with a login prompt awaiting. Let's dive into the fun. Enumeration The initial step in our attack is enumeration, which involves identifying the IP address of our target machine using NetDiscover. To execute this, open a terminal and run NetDiscover-i followed by specifying the network interface name, which in this case is ETH1. From the scan results, we've obtained our target IP address, 192.168.95.21. Next, we'll conduct a network scan to identify open ports, a crucial step in the enumeration process. This helps us understand the attack surface and strategize targeted attacks. We'll use the popular nmap tool for this task. Run nmap-sc-sv followed by specifying the IP address. In this command, Hyphen SC is used to perform a script scan using the default set of scripts, while hyphen SV enables version detection, allowing us to identify which versions are running on which port. After completing the network scan, we identified two open ports. Port 21 TCP, this indicates an SSH service is running on the target machine. Accessing this service with valid credentials would allow us to log in successfully. Port 80 TCP, this port is running an HTTP service. Nmap couldn't identify the specific web service running on it, suggesting it might be a custom web server or one with a very basic configuration. Now, let's explore the content of the website running on port 80. To look at the contents ourselves, open a web browser of your choice, and navigate to the target's IP address in the URL bar at the top of the window. This web page contains text-based content or you can say it as it contains ASCII text. There don't appear to be any vulnerabilities here, meaning this area isn't suitable for further escalation. For further escalation, let me check if there are any other open ports left by running nmap to find all open ports. nmap reveals that there is another open port. Port 1898 TCP, this port is running an Apache HTTP server, version 2.4.7, and is hosting a Drupal 7 content management system, CMS. The website is titled Lampio. To explore the content on port 1898, enter the target's IP address in your web browser's URL bar, followed by a colon and the port number. Upon accessing the website, you will see a page titled Lampio. 
This page appears to be a discussion or informational site about Lampio, a notable historical figure in Brazil. The main section of the page features an article titled Lampio, Herói ou Vileo do Sorteio, which translates to Lampio, Hero or Villain of the Sorteio. This article, posted by a user named Tiago on April 19, 2018, delves into the controversial legacy of Lampio. It examines how Lampio is viewed both as an idol by some, and as a murderer by others. The article emphasizes the dual nature of his reputation, noting that Lampio, a highly enigmatic figure in Brazilian history, was both feared and admired by those he affected. It invites readers to explore his complex story further. Additionally, the website includes sections for users to log in, create a new account, or request a new password. This suggests that the website might offer interactive or personalized features for registered users. Below the main article, there is another entry titled First Article, posted by a user named Edder on April 20, 2018. This entry seems to be a test post, featuring a brief message, a reference to an audio file named Luis Gonzaga Lampiofalu.mp3, and a note indicating that Node 2 is not working. Upon analyzing the website content, I came up with two ideas to gain a foothold on the target system. The first method is quite simple, we will try to brute force the system to obtain the username and password. The second method is more reliable and logical, as it involves exploiting a vulnerability on the target system. Foothold Let's explore how we can gain a foothold using the first method. Upon analyzing the website, I discovered that there are two users, Tiago and Edder, who participate in writing the blogs. These names appear to be potential usernames for the target system. To attempt to find their login credentials, we can use Hydra on the SSH service. First, we have to save the usernames to a file named username.txt. Next, we need a password word list. For this, we will use Sol. Sol is a Ruby application that spiders a given URL up to a specified depth and returns a list of words that can be used for password cracking. To see the various options for building a word list, run sol hyphen hyphen help. Now, use sol to generate a word list by specifying the URL and the hyphen w option to save the words to a file. Now that we have both the username list and the password list, we can use Hydra to perform the brute force attack. Upon execution, Hydra successfully retrieved the username and password, Tiago Virgilino. With the correct username and password, we can now access the server using an SSH client tool. The I do not prioritize this method because the main objective is to demonstrate the exploitation of the Drupal CMS. Therefore, let's focus on exploiting the vulnerability to gain a foothold on the server. We previously identified that the web server is running a Drupal 7 Content Management System, CMS, which was confirmed using Wapalizer. Given that this version of Drupal is outdated, it is likely to have known vulnerabilities. Let's investigate further to see if we can exploit any of these vulnerabilities. There is a tool called Searchsploit that is commonly used to search for exploits offline, without needing an internet connection. Searchsploit is a command line utility that allows you to search the exploit database, EDB, for information on exploits and vulnerabilities. When we use Searchsploit to search for Drupal-related exploits, particularly for Drupal 7, it will provide a list of various exploits and vulnerabilities. These exploits, including the notable Drupal Get Done series, represent critical vulnerabilities that can allow us to gain full control of a Drupal website. The exploits cover multiple attack vectors such as SQL injection, remote code execution, cross-site scripting, and arbitrary file upload. Some of these vulnerabilities are integrated into frameworks like Metasploit, which means they can be exploited using automated tools. Additionally, certain vulnerabilities are specific to particular Drupal modules. In this session, we will use the Drupal Get Done 2 remote code execution vulnerability to gain access to the target system. This process involves using the Metasploit framework. Launch the Metasploit console, MSF console. 
This initializes the Metasploit database and starts the Metasploit console. Once the MS console is launched, use the search command to find the Drupal get done to exploit. This command lists all matching modules related to Drupal get done to. Let's select the first module from the search results using the use command. Now, it's time to know the required and optional parameters for the selected exploit using the options command. The key options include our hosts, the target host, our port, the target port, target URI, the path to the Drupal install, and L host, the local host for the reverse connection. Now, let's configure the target host IP address, 192.168.95.21, and set the target port to 1898, which is where the vulnerable Drupal instance is running. Now, we will set the local IP address where the Metasploit instance will listen for the reverse connection. If you don't know your local IP address, then use the ifconfig command. Now, let's attempt to run the exploit to gain a foothold on the target system, which will lead to further escalation. After running the exploit command, the Metasploit framework automatically checked the target system and confirmed it was vulnerable. The exploit was successful, and the payload was executed, establishing a meterpreter session. This means we now have remote control over the target system through the meterpreter shell. Next, we need to switch from the meterpreter session to a standard shell session. This allows us to execute system commands directly. However, the shell did not provide an interactive command line interface. To verify this, I ran a command to check the current user ID. This confirmed that the shell operates under the www data user account, which is a low privilege account typically used by web servers. Let's upgrade the shell to make it more interactive. We'll use Python to spawn an interactive bash shell. First, check which Python version is available on the target system by running, which Python. Then, use Python to start a new bash shell with the following command. This command provides a more stable and functional shell environment. Next, we need to locate the user flag. Begin by navigating to the home directory and listing its contents, including hidden files. In the home directory, I found a directory named Tiago. This directory appears to belong to the user Tiago. Change into this directory. However, I couldn't find the user flag here. It's possible that the root flag might be located in the root directory. Attempting to navigate to the root directory. I encountered a permission denied error, indicating that the current user does not have sufficient privileges to access this directory. The next step is to identify any files or directories that might contain useful information for privilege escalation. Privilege escalation. During the privilege escalation process, our primary goal is to gather system information and identify any vulnerabilities or misconfigurations that could provide elevated privileges, ultimately allowing us to gain root access. Previously, we found that we do not have sufficient user permissions to perform user permission enumeration to understand the user's rights and privileges on the system. To proceed with privilege escalation directly from our current position, we can use a tool like LinPs. LinPs is a script that helps automate the process of identifying potential weaknesses in the system that could be exploited for privilege escalation. First, we have to send it to the target system. To proceed, we need the LinP script, which can be downloaded from GitHub. Next, we need to transfer the LinP script to the target system. To do this, we can set up a simple HTTP server on our machine to serve the script. Use Python to create an HTTP server to host the LinP script. Run the following command in the directory where the LinP script is located. This will start an HTTP server on port 8000. Ensure this port is accessible from the target system. Once the HTTP server is hosted, on the target shell, change the directory to TMP. To download the linpeas.sh file, we will use the wget command. First, list all files and directories to verify whether linpeas.sh has execution permissions. It does not, so, we will need to modify the permissions. To make linpeas.sh executable, use the chmod command. 
Next, run linpeas.sh to perform a comprehensive scan of the system for privilege escalation opportunities. The script will examine various aspects of the system, including misconfigurations, outdated or vulnerable software versions, and other security weaknesses that could be exploited to gain higher privileges. After analyzing the output, I discovered that the target system is vulnerable to a local privilege escalation LPE, attack. Among various scripts tested, I identified a suitable vulnerability to exploit, CVE 2016-5195, also known as the Dirty COW vulnerability. Let me download the script, which downloaded a C++ script. To download the exploit file, we will use the wget command. Next, compile the downloaded C++ script. Use the following G++ command to compile the script. This command will create an executable file. Run the compiled exploit to attempt privilege escalation. Upon execution, we obtained a root shell, which I confirmed using the whoami command. Since we have a root shell, Let's change the directory to the root and check if we can find the root flag. If you have any doubts or queries related to this process, feel free to write them in the comments section.